Hola amigos and welcome to a new vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in to part three of Cuba. In this episode, we're gonna be exploring Vinales, which was my favorite stop in all of Cuba. So let's go and have a look to see what I got up to there. So my plan had been to go to Valadero this morning. However, when I looked up accommodation last night, I couldn't find anything for under 50 Australian dollars per night, which is a little bit out of my travel budget. So instead, Caddy and I have decided to go straight to Vinales. And instead of catching a Viazul bus this time, we're catching a Collectivo, which is this car just behind me. And we've both paid $30 each to get all the way from Trinidad to Vinales. We made it to our second car to take us to Vinales. We've lost a windscreen wiper. In Cuba, everyone seemed to be a bit of an expert on cars. I'm assuming it's because the cars are all so old that they're constantly needing maintenance to keep them on the road. So we cruised down the highway looking for the lost wiper. He found it! This other car's stopped to help. But eventually we got the wiper fixed and we got back on the road to make it to our final destination of Vinales. Which was great because we were all pretty tired of the driver blasting reggaeton music. Smoking my first Cuban cigar in Cuba. This is the casa that we're staying at just here. And the people that uh, own the casa just gave us a cigar as a present as we came in. We were staying at Casa Rene y Olga, and after traveling and staying in quite a few places in Cuba, this place was my absolute 100% favorite. We were immediately made to feel right at home here. This is Rene. He and I quickly became great friends, even though I spoke barely any Spanish and Rene spoke no English. As soon as we arrived, Rene gave us all a demonstration of how to roll a cigar. Rene used to work on tobacco plantations and roll cigars as a job. I can't even begin to describe how welcomed and comfortable I felt staying with Rene and Olga. I don't really know how to smoke cigars properly. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong. Kathy, are you feeling at home in Vinales? Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you feel like listening to reggaeton? <laughs> My first vegetarian restaurant in Cuba. <laughs> if you are partial to vegetarian food and you're staying in Vinales, make sure you check out La Bea and Peniana. We ate here every day for five days. It was delicious. Here with my house father, Rene, sharing cigars. Hi, Rene. Hola. Hola. Hello. He showed us that in Cuba, because lighters are a little bit hard to come by, they actually refill the bottom of the lighter. So you can see how many times this big lighter has been refilled. That's insane. The Vinales Valley is known for its spectacular scenery. So the next day we set out to explore. We've just had another delicious vegetarian lunch and now we're going on a bit of a hike. It's only about four Ks to go and see one of the viewpoints to look out around Vinales. But I really should look down because there's a lot of mud going on right now. so peaceful out here. I can't really hear any noises apart from animals, birds, pigs. really don't think this guy's meant to be living yeah. on a chain. I think we're a little tiny bit lost on our journey. But it's okay because we're seeing lots of things on the way. Does anyone know what sort of rocks these are? Oh, I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. I can feel them on me. Guys, I found more piggies and these ones are free. Hey piggies. Oh shit. <laughs> I didn't see them. <laughs> This is how Dorothy felt when she returned to Oz and the yellow brick road was destroyed. Oh, almost, almost to the cave. We made it into the cave. Let's go explore. So 
So that walk out of the cave was very difficult and very slippery. I'm wearing completely the wrong shoes for this occasion. I always seem to be wearing the wrong shoes for walking and exercising. I think it's because I just don't do it very often, so I don't own the right shoes. But I slipped at least five times and I'm covered in mud. But we've decided to trek onwards, back to the village around the mountains. It's now 7 p.m. and we've still got kilometers left on this walk. It's gonna get dark in about an hour. It's very slippery underfoot. I've got no idea where we are. The views are incredible, I'm having a great time. But I kind of wish I was already back home at the Casa now. While I was waiting for the others, I've just discovered that it is very, very echoey out here. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to hear it on the GoPro, but let's give it a go, ready? How amazing is that? Because we decided not to turn back around at the cave, it meant that the walk was going to be a lot more than four kilometers. And as it got darker, it seemed to be getting muddier underfoot. Go for a walk, they say. It'll be fun, they say. So we just went the way that was gonna be the shorter way. But then we couldn't cross the river because it's been raining for days and the river is unpassable, so now we have to go back. <laughs> oh, the pigs are following me. They're the only things making this walk bearable right now. Oh, we may have found another way to cross the river. Is it working? Yeah. We're doing it. We're crossing the river. Fucking hell. Oh. Oh, be careful, I don't want you to go over. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> now we can go back to the city. <laughs> I think this is like proper hiking. If I ever got lost in the jungle by myself, I'd just lay somewhere and die, I think. Back in a village. We've made it to a village. There's lights, there's people. We're alive! <laughs> After we made it home alive from the hike, we all celebrated with some freshly rolled Cuban cigars. We're going to the beach today. It's about 70 k's outside of Vinales, so we've got a bit of a journey ahead of us. We've made it to the beach, Playa Gaya Jutias. This is my third beach in Cuba, and I think this one's my favorite so far. The water looks absolutely beautiful. There was mangroves all on the way in, and there's little crabs everywhere. There were big scary crabs outside, just on the road, but there's little tiny hermit crabs around here. I'm setting off to go on a crab investigative mission and if I'm being a little bit honest, I'm a little bit terrified because some of those crabs look huge. These aren't the hermit crabs. These are these other crabs. They live on the side of the road. Look at the size of that hole. That's a crab hole, so there's a big crab in there somewhere. I swear to God, there's millions of crabs around here, but every time I get closer, I'm trying to be quiet. I'm sure it's windy. Every time I get closer, they go into their holes. I'm just gonna turn the camera around and then I'm gonna zoom for you. But there was nothing. I left my camera here like this for over five minutes and walked away and not a single crab decided to walk past my camera. I swear to God, there's giant crabs on this beach. Look, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit disappointed that I haven't been able to bring you any footage of giant crabs. They're everywhere, believe me. Just every time I come close to try and film them, they hide in their homes and they're really quick at it. So. I don't think you're seeing any good footage of giant crabs today, but please just know that there's giant crabs everywhere. 
but as it was the rainy season, all of a sudden it started bucketing down with rain. I bet those crabs would have loved it. So we went back home to hang out with Renee and Olga. We're having a very Cuban evening this evening. Oh We're yeah. All sitting around smoking cigars. Jugando <laughs> dominos. Drinking some rum and playing some dominoes. <laughs> Playing dominoes is a tradition in Cuba, and the skills of the game are often passed down through generations. René taught us to play the game using a domino set that had been passed down from his own grandfather and was over 100 years old. Once again, we've got ourselves a delicious casa breakfast. So I've got a nice fresh coffee, some fruit, French toast today, freshly squeezed juice, some pan, bread, and that's the sound of some eggs cooking. Got my eggs. Let me give you a run through of my favorite casa in all of Cuba. This is the casa of Rene y Alga. Here is our living area. Here is Olga. Hola, Olga. Hola. And this is Rene. Hola, Hola. Rene. <laughs> this is the kitchen. Out here is where the chickens live. The casa is on a beautiful, quiet family street. The casa over there, we've got friends staying at that we met on the bus here, so we've been hanging out for the past couple of days. And that casa has been very hospitable to us as well, having us over for drinks. And this is our room. And this is the bathroom, which is quite lovely. I think the reason why this casa has been my absolute favorite casa so far is just simply because of Renee and Olga. They have been so lovely to both Katty and I. They've been giving us rum each night when we come home. Renee's been giving us cigars that he's hand rolled himself. They have just been an absolute pleasure to stay with and so much fun. So if you are in Vinales, please look up Renee e Olga Casa and come and stay here because this is the best place that I have found to stay in Cuba. I'm eating lunch with Renee and Olga. It's got some avocado, yuca, y malanga. Malanga. Si. And huevos. Y arroz, y arroz moro. Arroz. Moro. Arroz moro. Arroz moro. Arroz moro. <laughs> Mia, Matias, and I are going on another walk today in Vinales, another hike. This one we're going to Silence Valley. Hopefully it's not as muddy as our hike the other day. We'll soon find out. Just a little bit more muddy roads. Not as bad as the other day, which is fantastic news. And the sun's just gone behind a cloud for the first time, which is also fantastic news because it is really, really hot and humid. One of my favorite things about Cuba is the animals everywhere. Decided to go barefoot. We've been following the river. Which way do we want to go? I got this one. Oh, this one. But the adventurer is gonna check. <laughs> we took our shoes off this time so they didn't get destroyed again by the mud like the last last walk. But barefoot in this. They wear lots of money to go to saunas and mud spas, but you can just go on a hike in Vinales and sweat everything out and stand in a whole bunch of mud. Oh, baby chickens with the lovely chicken mommy. Doing little baby chicken things with the little chicken family. Vinales was definitely my all time favorite place in Cuba. When we left, Renee even shed a little tear. Did I cry? Did Maggie laugh? <gasps> but Matthias, Leah and I were on our way to our next destination, Las Terraza. We've made it to the small town of Las Terraza. We're at a vegetarian restaurant in Las Terraza. But we're all having this weird feeling, like we're not really comfortable here. Yeah. I don't know why. Such a weird feeling. The place is beautiful and it's strange. Like it's really strange. Maybe we're gonna date some more. There's this animal on the lake that's living in this little house and I think they've trapped him there and so I think our mission would be to free the animal yeah. in order to free our souls. Yeah. 
but once we'd all eaten our delicious vegetarian food, we all felt a lot better about the situation. Today we're here at Banos del San Juan, which is a, a water hole that you can swim in just outside of Las Terrazas. And then we're gonna be staying in these little cabanas here out in the, out in the jungle. So it's gonna be a lovely night's sleep. Las Terrazas turned out to be a pretty cool place to stop. What I enjoyed about this place is that there weren't many tourists, just lots of Cuban people who made their way from Havana on the weekends to hang out with their friends and family. It was a great opportunity to hang out with, meet some locals. While I find Cuba is quite expensive to travel in, sometimes it's quite cheap. All of this cost me 7.20 CUC, which is $7.20 American. It's a bottle of rum, four soft drinks, and a packet of cigarettes. But I had come full circle now, and after two nights in nature, it was time to head back to Havana. The people from Australia, yeah, the people from Australia. I want to say um, the people of Cuba don't live all the time. Play music. Is today is Sunday, Sunday or Monday? Sunday. Oh, it's Monday now. <laughs> Forget it today. I took the opportunity to do a couple of things in Havana that I didn't do the first time round. I visited the Hotel Nacional de Cuba, which was built by and for Americans back when the two nations were still besties. And it's had a plethora of famous guests, including Frank Sinatra, Walt Disney, Steven Spielberg, and Leonardo DiCaprio. This is my last casa back in Havana before I leave Cuba. <laughs> Then you go up these stairs to get to the terrace. And down here to get out. Oh, look, and there I am. <laughs> and this up here is our beautiful terrace for our last couple of nights in Havana. This is uh, how to buy a Wi-Fi card while avoiding stairs. Here's one cook. Why do we have to give our phones? I don't know, just... Yeah. Should I go down? Then I can unlock it. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna have to use the stairs. It's my second last day here in Cuba and we thought why not come for one last hurrah to a beautiful beach in the Gulf of Mexico. We're just outside of Havana and have a look how stunningly beautiful this is. We lounged in the sun for a couple of hours. I got a little bit sunburnt, but then we had to leave and lucky we did because it started to pour with rain again. It was my very last evening in Cuba. I loved her people, her adventure, and her complete contrast to a way of life that I was used to. But I did miss my Wi-Fi access and Mexican food. So the next day I headed back to the airport for my return flight to Cancun. I'm Jet Set Jess. I'm back here at the Havana airport. I'm leaving Cuba and I'm feeling really quite sad to be leaving Cuba actually, but it's okay. I'm back on to Mexico. This has been a very interesting incredible country where I've met great people, great locals, had a generally interesting time, but thank you for watching this video. If you do like this video, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, love you, bye!